Hello, fellow book lovers, both readers and writers. I am Maddie Dowernbull. I write the Ann Kinnear suspense novels and suspense shorts in the Lizzie Ballard thrillers. And I also write, speak, consult, and podcast on the writing craft and the publishing voyage as the indie author. And you can find out more about me at maddiedollarnbull.com and at theindieauthor.com. And this is my video series, What I Learned, where I ask authors two questions related to their latest book. What did they learn from that book that they would like to share with their fellow writers? And what did they learn that they would like to share with their fellow readers? And so today I'm here with Patricia Crisofoli. How are you doing, Tricia? I'm very well and I'm thrilled to be on your show. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, it is my pleasure to give our viewers a little bit of background on you. Patricia Crisofoli is an award-winning writer and a New York Times bestselling author. She is the founder of faithhopeandfiction.com, an e-literary site. Her first novel, The Secrets of Onita Harbor, was published by Woodhall Press in 2022, and her second, The Secrets of Stillwater's Chasm, was published in September of 2023. And so today I am asking Trisha the two what I learned questions about The Secrets of Stillwater's Chasm, starting with what did you learn that you would like to share with your fellow writers? Just thinking about this this morning is such a long answer, but it really comes down to one sentence. Follow the narrative. Because I'm a mystery writer, and as we mystery writers know, right, sometimes the plot or the character development takes unexpected twists and turns. We want that experience for our readers, but sometimes it happens to us writers. I've had everything from two unexpected characters fall in love with each other. And I'm like, what? Where did that? Oh, that's an interesting thing. I've had little coincidences. There are no coincidences out there that have come up in research or conversations that deepened my mystery. I've had people that I happen to meet by chance who have said something to me. My cousin, my cousin and visiting her. Hello, cousin Melanie who had a certain kind of canoe in her garage. And I went, tell me about that canoe. I've got one similar in my book. Follow the narrative, engage in your own mystery. And it will not only increase the, you know, the, the depth and the details and the texture of your book, but you will experience the mystery and the plot acceleration in a very visceral way that I think enlivens the writer's journey. Have you ever had the experience of following one of those inspirations and then having to back off it because you felt it was not taking you in the right direction? Or do you almost always find that that serendipitously it is in fact the direction that, that the story needs to go? Well, it depends. <clears throat> if the tangent starts up here in my brain and I'm cooking up some idea, I frequently leave myself into rabbit holes, up against brick walls. But it's okay because what we don't include, what we don't write, can be just as important as what we do. Because sometimes we have to just eliminate that possibility. But when things are happening sort of what I'm going to call organically, where that conversation with my cousin or with finding out that a friend of mine knows a lot about, you know, nautical history, those kinds of breadcrumbs usually are very fruitful. Why is that? Because I think my brain is making connections sort of outside of me. And it's some part of me that's writing when I'm not writing. And that tends to be the most fruitful in leading me into meaningful direction. So it's all, it's all advancing, you know, the narrative, but those serendipitous things, I think, are the most fruitful because my brain is latching onto them for an important reason. Yeah, it's very interesting. We are recording this and it should go live on November 13th. And on November 14th, the next episode of the Indie Author Podcast will go up. It's a conversation with Art Taylor. And we talk a lot about exactly what you're saying, those those either serendipitous things that you encounter or research, like how learning a little bit during your book research can lead the story in a fruitful direction. Absolutely. In The Secrets of Stillwater's Chasm, I had to learn a lot about nautical history in northern New York State. No spoilers. And I, I mean, first of all, now I live in Oregon, but I grew up there. And in and in do in researching things like shipwrecks on the Great Lakes and the innovative designs of Robert Fulton and his Nautilus experiment and all these things. First of all, it's just fun to know this stuff, but it took me more deeply into the history of the place I grew up and I was able to paint a picture. It's not an historical book. 
It's set in present time. But there are two mysteries that modern day whodunit, who's, why are all these dead bodies showing up? <laughs> and an artifact that wants to be found, that wants to be known. And that's a metaphor for all of us, right? What we have inside. Those kinds of little clues that I discovered in research, I then discovered through my protagonist, who is an authenticator. Oh, cool. Do you have any tie into that profession? Not at all, except I used to be a journalist, so I'm kind of nosy. I mean, <clears throat> investigative, nosy. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I had to invent all of it. But it speaks very deeply to me because I think all of us who are, love to research or love to find out the truth of things, right, or you know the, how, the why and the wherefore, that kind of personality I definitely have. And that really was fun for me to create my protagonist, Gabriella Dominici. So cool. So you've shared a little bit of what you learned that you'd like to share with your fellow writers. What about readers? What did you learn from The Secrets of Stillwater's Castle that you'd like to share with your fellow readers? To find the connection to the story that it invites you, dear reader, right? <laughs> As Jane Austen would say, you, dear reader, with the old, your own mystery in your life. All of us long, I think, for something extraordinary. There are those moments where ordinary and extraordinary intersect. It's a bit of serendipity. It's a bit of the unexpected. And I think a mystery invites you to say, huh, now, maybe it's not as dramatic as being involved in a great big murder mystery. I hope that's not happened in your lives. But that photograph you come across and you say, hmm, who is that person in that the background of that picture that I just found in my grandmother's album? Hmm, where did this little piece of antique jewelry I found in my grandmother's box come from? The more we engage in mystery, the more we let those hidden things speak to us and enrich our lives. So find that connection as you read a mystery. Where are your mysteries and where will they take you? That's very interesting. I've heard a lot of writers speak about that kind of thing as a writing prompt, you know, that maybe they would categorize it under the what did you learn that you'd like to share with your fellow writers. But just throwing that out to the public in general, very interesting exercise for people to engage in. I think it's the, one of the reasons why we love to read mysteries, especially in a time of uncertainty. Because, I mean, pick, look at the world, pick a headline, uncertainty, <laughs> galore. Yeah. During this time when we, we whatever, you know, we're, we're, we're thinking about, we want answers, we want solutions. Our critical thinking gets engaged when we read a mystery. And I think that helps us develop the critical thinking to find some answers in our own lives. And it helps us deal with uncertainty. I think it's a great skill to develop. And a mystery can help get you there. It reminds me of a story I heard about my grandfather, who is somebody who liked to muse on things. You know, if he found the picture of the ancestor that he'd want to muse about what that was, or the, you know, the, the trinket in the drawer, or whatever. And I remember at just at the start of when, like, the internet started become av becoming available. And my mother said to him, oh, well, you know, we could probably look that up. It was not a personal thing. It was some general thing. You know, like, I wonder when something happened. And he said, no, no, I don't want to. I, I just, I enjoy thinking about it. I don't need the answer. I just like the experience of musing about it. And maybe finding out the actual fact would have sort of ruined it for him. He loved the question. Yeah. What an amazing person. Yeah. He dwelled in the question more than he needed the answer. Wow, that is amazing kind of way to go about the world. I'm going to dwell in this question. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's a mark. Maybe that's the mark that is the marker of the writer, that you need to take it from the question to the answer. Well, it's the explorer in all of us as writers yeah. and readers. I think we meet in the community that's built around that question. You know, in The Secrets of Stillwater's Chasm, it is like what, you know, what killed these two innocent people who were found in the beginning. And also why, what is happening? What, what endangers the chasm? You know, what is propelling this kind of malevolent undercurrent? What is what is at the heart of the suspicion and the fear? 
And it, it's, it's a huge question, kind of an existential question that's surrounding a community. And it's drawing them together, adding some pressure. So, you know, who's on which side is going to pop out eventually. But it is a community surrounded by very, very big questions. And I think dwelling in those questions leads us to our own truths with small t's, right? And then hopefully the bigger truth. Well, Trisha, I think you have intrigued people. You've put out a great teaser there for The Secrets of Stillwater's Chasm. So please let everyone know where they can go to find out more about you and your book and everything you do online. You know, the easiest place to start is on my website. It's called faithhopeandfiction.com, and it's spelled out F-A-I-T-H-H-O-P-E-A-N-D-F-I-C-T-I-O-N.com. The faith part is faith in yourself and in, in, in inspiration, hope. You can't create anything without hope and fiction because in our stories, we find our deepest truths. So you can find more about me, more about my books, and they're sold everywhere. Your fine favorite books are sold. So The Secrets of Onita Harbor is the first one. The Secrets of Stillwater Chasm is the brand new one. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you.